Hello, everyone. Welcome to the UpRev Ninja podcast. If this is your first time listening, thanks for joining us. This show is produced each week with the single intent of discovering the tips, tricks, hacks, and lessons learned from our guests that has catapulted them into living the best version of themselves. Join your host, Tom Hudson, as he continues his search for the best methods to uprev his life. Now, let's dive into the show. Davina Donovan's a registered psychologist and yoga teacher based in Brisbane, Australia. Davina runs a solo private psychology, yoga, and mindfulness practice. She has vast experience working with people of all ages, particularly with children and young people, to manage and cope with varying emotional and psychological disorders. Davina has a special interest in working with those affected by bullying, suicide, and trauma. Her aim in life is to help every individual to lead the most authentic existence they can. She does this by example. Davina hasn't always lived authentically. Pushed and pulled in varying directions, Davina thought that happiness came from succeeding at everyone else's expectations and tasks. Until she had an intense awakening experience and realized that there is so much more to life. Davina practices her passion every day and lives her own life by the values of her business, truth, humility, compassion, and authenticity. Well, welcome, Davina, to the Up Rev Ninja podcast. How are you today? I'm amazing, Tom. Thanks so much for having me. That's fantastic. I mean, based on the bio I've already read, I, I think you are amazing. So um, that said, I would love to, for you to share in your own words just who you are and what you're about and how did you get to where you are today? Oh, thanks. That's very kind of you. And I have to say the feeling is mutual. I was very drawn to your um, your website and what your mission is. And I think we're, we're almost doing very similar things, but on different parts of the world. So I think your stuff absolutely resonated with me as well. So I'm very honoured to be part of this. And you'll have to cut me off if I talk too much because I'm very, very passionate about this particular topic of Becoming and finding the authentic you. I love so passion. If, I, if it gets too much, cut me off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I suppose my story, it's a pretty long story, but there's, there's been a lot of I mean, incredibly pivotal moments in my life. But the biggest thing for me was, it's a little bit cliche, but I was working in you know, a really tough job. I'm a psychologist by trade and I was working in a really tough job and I was giving in giving and giving so much of myself to my clients and the staff that I was managing and the, the, the people in the community. I actually, I really lost sight of who I was. I was getting too stuck in the world of other people. And the absolute massive sort of pivotal moment for me was when I, uh, I found out about a 10 day meditation course called Vipassana, very very popular 10 days of silence, 10 hours of meditation a day. And I just, I realized I needed to change something. I just didn't know what I needed to change. And I went to this 10 day retreat and it was the first time in a possibly my whole life that I got a chance to just be with myself and just sit in some silence and be with my own thoughts and my own feelings because for such a long time as a psychologist I'd spent so much time being with other people's thoughts and feelings um, and I just it was almost like just doing that all these light bulbs started to go off and I started to realize good and bad things about myself or, or not so bad but areas for improvement and from there it just sparked this a massive journey of curiosity and, and self-discovery I thought well if I can find out this about myself in 10 days, imagine what I'm going to find out committing to doing this as a bit of a life practice. So I, I, I took a really huge step. It was a very scary step, but I took a huge step and quit my job. And I went traveling, actually. I was still very privileged and very grateful to have the experience and opportunity to be able to travel. I traveled for about seven months around different parts of the world including America and some of my favorite parts of, of the country and my I suppose my purpose was to keep uncovering who I was and what my own thoughts and feelings were because I always was, used to get so confused as to what were my thoughts and what were society's thoughts or what were clients thoughts or what was family's thoughts and feelings so for me that 
that overcoming that huge fear of, of finding out about myself because I think sometimes it's very daunting to what my teacher says. He, he says, do introspection. It's very daunting to go inwards and, and peel apart some of those layers and, and go to the core of who you are. And I have to say it's been the most scary and difficult thing I've ever done, but it's been the single most rewarding thing I've ever done. And from doing that, I started to understand what I actually wanted in life and what made me happy. And then when I got back from overseas, that's when I started my own business and I wanted to share my journey and my story and my learnings with more and more people in a more authentic way rather than a way that um, was always prescribed to me. I wanted to sort of not make my own rules, but I wanted to teach people, help people, guide people in a way that I felt was authentic to me and my values. And that's where, you know, Dharma and Co came from, the business that I run, but that has allowed me to continue my journey of authenticity and self-discovery by running the business in the way that I want to run it. Isn't it funny how we all grow up the same manner? You know, we, we grow up with no fears, very happy-go-lucky mm. and ready to conquer the world. And then just over time, social conditioning and this you know, programming that kind of gets bestowed on us and that we absorb and make a part of who we are uh, becomes who we are. And then we have to do all this work in our older years to shed all of that. It's it's so bizarre. And uh, I don't know, it, it's good to see people, though, that, that do go through this. And, you know, because so many people don't or they're just terrified of, you know, what they're going to find out about themselves for, you know, whatever reason. So, um yeah, so it sounds like a, a great journey, and I, I know about the the retreat you did, the the ten day meditation retreat. I was uh, supposed to have done that last year, and yeah, one thing happened and another, and it got pushed off, and I haven't rescheduled it. So <laughs> it's on my to do list. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big believer that you do these things in at the exact right time. So there's yeah. a reason that you've rescheduled, and there's when you do get to do it, it'll be the exact perfect time for you and I know that that was the case for me when I did it and I you know I was actually thinking last night um of how I got to be where I am right this moment in time and I was reflecting back on on the journey and I realized that the passion was a big changing moment but then I looked back and thought hold on a second there's actually there were more things that led led to that if I hadn't have it kind of all goes even further back but if I hadn't have um taking, you know, um, there was a particular job that I did many years ago that was really, really difficult and stressful. And at the time I was thinking, what am I doing? Why do I keep coming to this job? Why can't things change? And I think I fought for a good six or eight months thinking, oh, surely this has got to get better or I hate my job and I'm just pushing myself to go every day. And eventually I left that job and got a new job and it was really amazing. And through that job, I had another window or huge door opened that, that allowed me to move away from my family home for the first time in my life. And had I not moved there, I wouldn't have met this particular person who introduced me to meditation and mindfulness. And if I hadn't met him, I would never have um, gotten into this beautiful practice of meditation and mindfulness. And that wouldn't have, I would never have had this moment where I thought there's more to life than just working nine to five. And that, if I hadn't had that thought, I wouldn't have been open to the yoga course that I did and then you know, eventually becoming a yoga teacher. And if I hadn't have become a yoga teacher, I would have never have met the teacher who introduced me to Vipassana. If I'd never been to Vipassana, I would never have met this beautiful woman who introduced me to a uh, bioenergy meditation that's based in Bali. I would never have gone to Bali and started this incredible journey. So I, and I look back on that, first particular job that I did and and in the moment I was thinking this is terrible and I hate this job and what am I doing but now with this newfound you know respect for it I realize how grateful I am if that job hadn't have been right. terrible it would never have kind of pushed me onto that that path that has led me to where I am today so you're right I love what you said about as kids we have this beautiful uh, I like to refer to it as like a beginner's mind we just 
see the world with fresh eyes and everything's great and we've got no fear and we don't look back on, um, you know, I fell over yesterday when I was learning to walk as a small child and I'm, so I'm not going to bother doing that today. Right. Yeah. If kids had the you know the adult mind, they would never learn to walk. So it's such a, we can learn so much from kids, I think. But if if that those series of events hadn't unfolded for me, I wouldn't be where I am today. So I'm so grateful that that job was difficult because it really got me on this path. That's fantastic. No, and, and I, I agree. It, it's we we have to be thankful for everything's happened to us in our past because even if you know if it's good bad and different it's got us to where we are today and you know I, I think that's critically important so um you know looking back over your life and uh, where you're at now was there something that always kind of you felt held you back like you know shame or uh, just fear anything like that that you felt like was a major block that you had to get past yeah, absolutely. Again, it's I suppose it's a little bit cliche, but I think most humans can relate to it. But that good old fear, I, it it comes in so many different forms. And for me, it wasn't necessarily, um, you know, that traditional being scared fear. It was more I developed a lovely comfort zone, and it was it was nice. And I I think in, in my profession as a psychologist, there's this very big sort of uh, expectation that you as a psychologist you need to you know have all your ducks in a line and you should be you know emotionally good and you know because if you're going to be helping other people then you should be good yourself but uh, it's just a big miss at the end of the day psychologists are just humans as well so I think I got very caught in that um that role of needing to always be the one who was strong and okay and the fear of if I wasn't how that would look to you know, society or to you know, clients or work colleagues or family members and things like that. So there was this definite fear of being vulnerable mm-hmm. and, you know, and the fears that come with that, the, the, the uncomfortableness, that, you know, that's not necessarily a word, but the uncomfortableness that comes with being vulnerable. And then there you is know, the good old fear of failure. And um, I think for me as well, there was a very I didn't know this until more recently, but there definitely was a, a huge lack of self-acceptance. I realised, um, particularly very recently through this this journey that I've been on, that I, I appeared to be very confident and self-accepting, but actually I was doing a lot of things in my life that was pleasing other people because that's what I thought was going to get me somewhere. And it wasn't until recently I realised that actually... I'm the most important person in my life. I'm the lead character of this this story that is my human existence. And if I'm not focusing on me and accepting me for who I am, I'm actually not going to get very far. That was just, that was another big aha moment for me amongst right. lots of aha moments recently. But I realized that in the past I was probably um, living a life for other people and not so much for myself because I was, I was scared to be me, scared of the the judgment, scared of of you know, maybe losing friends or not being accepted somewhere. But at the end of the day, that fear actually came from a place of not accepting who I was. If I was, you know, comfortable and confident with myself, that fear wouldn't actually be there. So stepping out of that comfort zone, and they often say that again, that cliche. Um, if you can imagine you know, two, two spheres in space. Um, the little one down the bottom is the comfort zone and the big one up the top is where the magic happens. And that's such a huge thing for me is every time I step out of my comfort zone, something quite amazing happens, but it's, it takes a lot of courage to be able to actually step out of that comfort zone. And, yes, so so for me, absolute fear, yeah. absolute fear. And these days it's, it's, it's a heck of a lot less now. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, you go through this journey a couple of times and you, uh, I don't think it's confidence that you necessarily build. It's just, a, it's like resilience and trusting mm. yourself. I, I think that helps you uh, go through these uh, moments of fear easier and quicker and more efficiently. Uh, at least, I, I don't know, that's the way I, I label it anyway. So, 
Um, so it sounds like you've had a lot of mentors, you know, kind of coaches along the way, uh, your journey. Is there uh, been any piece of, you know, wisdom that they've given you, you know, like a, a mantra that's really helped you uh, get through some of these tough times and make sure that you're staying on this path of always trying to be better? Absolutely. Oh, gosh, there's probably hundreds of thousands of <laughs> right. <laughs> beautiful one-liners and beautiful – my, my the, the, the two teachers who taught me to be a yoga teacher are just the, two of the most authentic, beautiful human beings um, going. And every time I go back and do a class with one of them, they just have to speak a couple of words and I'm already – I feel almost in tears with gratitude and how wise and amazing they are. But I think that there's probably two big things that stand out that I'm, I probably have held on to and, and kept as as the real, you know, big guiding principles for me. And one of them is, is, is as simple as let go. I think for me, I've always held on to certain things, whether it's uh, whether it's things like a grudge or a, uh, a particular plan that I want to, you know, come to fruition or uh, an ideal, whatever it might be. I, I kind of held on to that and if, I think the difficulty with holding on to something is if we don't get it, there's it's met with you know disappointment or maybe self hate or whatever it might be that comes with not achieving a certain thing that you've set out to achieve. So this concept of just let go, like let let it go, let let what be to be, and that's been a huge thing for me, and that's a, a thing I keep coming back to whenever I find myself uh, kind of attaching to a certain. Um, ideal or place or just anything, I just remind myself that you've got to let go sometimes. Right. Because it's the holding on part that actually can, can cause us such discomfort. Uh, and another really, really big one is that there is no, like, there is no right or wrong. There is no um, a hack or there is no way to be because your life is your life. And you are unique in that. So people can sit there and mentor you and, and guide you along the way. But at the end of the day, there is no one size fits all. It is your journey. And the best advice is that there is no advice, really. It's, right. it, it's, your, it's your journey and your own unique, beautiful kind of you know, journey of self-discovery. And I keep coming back to that because in my, um, in my meditations and in my yoga practices there is that temptation to well and in society there's that huge temptation and almost pressure to compare yourself to where other people are and what other people are doing and you know you get to a certain age and you you know air quotations you should be doing certain things but I, I keep coming back to this this beautiful concept of there is no right or wrong it's my journey and I cannot compare myself to where other people are on their journey because we're all completely unique on this path. Yeah, I think that checklist that society tells us that we have to do is does so much more harm than good um, because, you know, we all, you know, it's just so big, you know, like, all right, you, you get out of, you know, school, you go to uni, then you get married, you have 2.3 kids, you buy the house with the fence <laughs> and you know, the dog, you know, get the dog and go to football practice, <laughs> you know, and then you have grandkids, <laughs> you know, um, that, that's it. That That's, you know, and I'm like, there's so much more than that. And, um, and a, a comment kind of popped in my head when you said, let go, uh, people, instead of living in the now, you know, living right now what's happening they become very outcome focused outcome dependent focused so you know if i were on a date or something like that rather than focusing on the conversation right now we're thinking like, you know does this other person like me is my hair messed up um what's going to happen tomorrow are they going to go on a second date with me and rather than living in the moment and what they don't realize is by thinking about you know, the future in that moment, they're actually making that future not happen because they're not presently active, you know, actively listening, being a part of the conversation and 
being 100% there with the other person. So just letting go. I completely agree with you. And I, I definitely think that's a, uh, a great piece, you know, a good guiding principle to live by. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah, that's exactly my my own personal mantra is that present moment. It, we do we do almost self sabotage in a way by anticipating what's going to happen next. And I love your example of you know being on a date. You know, I I, I often um, I run workshops for professionals and have done in, and so in the past on how to be present with a client. It, you know, we have this expectation of what to say next and how to help the person and where we want that person mm-hmm. to go in their treatment p- plan. And by doing all of that stuff, we're not being genuine and authentic in that moment with that person. And we're actually potentially not doing harm, but not we're not doing the best work that we can do. We're not being you know, that, that, that present, genuine person. And I had this beautiful... It seems so simple when you think about it, but you know when you have those light bulb moments, and once you have them, you, you think actually that's really common, kind of common sense. Right. But until the light bulb goes off, you don't know it's common sense. But I had this beautiful moment, uh, in probably about a month ago, where I just realised that the single most precious commodity we have in our existence, I believe, is time. You know, we can we can make new friends. We can you know, adopt or, or, you know, get new family members. We can, if we lose all the gold in the world, we'll find another resource that's equally as, as you know, tough and durable and et cetera, et cetera. But time, if we're not in the present moment and we're thinking about the future all the time, we literally are losing time. We're losing moments in time. Right. And we cannot get, we cannot get that back. Once it's gone, it's gone. So yeah. time is just this beautiful, precious commodity that I, I I used to take for granted, but these days is just learning to be so much more present and in this moment, because once it's gone, I am not going to get that back. You prioritize your life completely differently, don't you? Like, Absolutely. Yeah. I, I've made that realization a few years ago, and it was, yeah, it, it was quite transformational. So... Um, what's a, uh, something that you just, you really feel, you know, really helps you, you know, um, be that like, uh, you know, journaling or meditation, you know, something that you integrated into your life and it's helped you either, you know, financially, physically, emotionally, you know, anything like that, that you just absolutely swear by. And if someone's just getting started out on a journey and I understand that, we're all our own book and we're all writing our own stories. But, Mm. you know, if someone were to like, just see a piece of paper flying down the street and they grabbed it and it said meditation, you know, like, Ooh, maybe I should try that. You know, what, what would you um, suggest? It's a really good question because there are just so many beautiful modalities out there that are so helpful. And yeah, like you said, there's, there's there's not the, um, the the magic kind of wand for anyone. I, I suppose I've, could answer this in two ways. The first way would be try everything <laughs> and until you find the thing that resonates with you. I know for me I've tried a lot of things over the years until I found, you know, those things that really um really worked and sat with me. And it's kind of ironic and I I'll, I'll be very honest here, I used to tell people to journal um because it sounded like a really great thing to do and I never really journaled myself. Mm. So I was being a little bit of a hypocrite, actually. I'll be honest with that. Is and that's just that's I suppose the authentic me being truthful. As I I would advise people to journal. I never really did it myself. Um, that's not true anymore. I I have actually found so much benefit in journaling and writing down what's really truthfully going on inside of my head because sometimes there's a fear of verbally communicating that out loud to other people, you know, through fear of you know, judgment or, you know, whatever consequence and repercussion might happen from really speaking the truth. So writing this stuff down is just more powerful than I ever gave it credit for. And yeah. I have got just like like piles and piles of journals that I've been writing in. Um, and it's, it's probably been about a year or so that I started journaling and the 
particularly that overseas trip was a beautiful chance to really write down some of those truths. And, you know, disclaimer alert is sometimes when you write those truths down, you read them back and you, you see things that you maybe don't always like or feel comfortable with, right. but it's so important to, to get them out and speak those truths because it helps you to learn who you are and, and what it is that you like and don't like about yourself and about others and about society. So I would say journaling and, and again, this idea of meditation, it's, oh, I think give it five more years and it will just be a thing that every human is doing. It's, I agree. It'll be the same as jogging. Yeah, no, um, I, I absolutely <laughs> agree with that. It's still a little bit new. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I've... Uh... That is, meditation's amazing. It's that, it's that chance that you get to just be with your own own thoughts and your own feelings and just to watch what's happening that you know so even deeper than than meditation is i like to do a mindful like a mindful meditation where it's not about stilling and quieting the mind but it's about watching being curious as to what what's actually going on inside of me and trying not to 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 judge that and just letting that letting that unfold you know sometimes we'll be sitting there thinking about the shopping list and, you know, next thing you know, you're thinking about the next door neighbor's dog and you're thinking, well, Helen, how on earth did I go from shopping list to next door neighbor's dog? <laughs> right. So that's mindlessness. But when you learn and, and practice meditation, you know exactly how you get from shopping list to next door neighbor's dog. So you start to really learn and, and get it, so much insight into how you get from A to B. And that is, I can't. I don't have words for how powerful and life changing that process becomes, because you just are getting so much beautiful insight into your own mind and your own soul and spirit by just spending time with yourself in that quiet moment. So powerful. Yeah, I I've meditated in some form or another since I was a kid, and a lot of it was because of martial arts, but. Uh, I, Journaling has always been my uh, way to get my thoughts out. And probably, I would say, in the last year or so, I, I really kind of have honed my meditation practice. And I, I'm a lot better now. And I, I can, um, and, and I think you, you actually kind of touched on this. There's millions of different types of meditations. It's not, you mm -hmm. just don't have to sit there and be quiet. And, you know, there, there's different modes, different uh, exercises you can do. It's like journaling, you know, you could either use someone's template or you can just freehand or whatever. So, you know, if you're, if you're listening to this and you haven't, if you've tried journaling or meditation, try a different style of meditation or a different style of journaling. There's tons of different ways of doing this stuff. So... Definitely. And if I can offer another tip as well, is yeah. there's that myth out there that when we meditate, we need to have a very still and quiet mind. And as soon as the mind wanders, um, there's that, that temptation to say, well, it's not working. I can't do this. But if, you know, for your listeners, it's a beautiful thing to understand that the mind is meant to wander. It's unless we become, you know, these enlightened Buddhas, which, you know, that would be amazing right. if we could all get to that place. But, you know, at the end of the day, we're, we're in this, this world and, and we're not necessarily going to get to that place of enlightenment soon. Um, the mind will wander and it's meant to wander and we just need to practice watching it and see where it wanders to rather than trying to keep it still. And often as you get better at meditation, it, I, I kind of paradoxically, the mind seems to wander even more but that just it often indicates that you're getting better at your meditation because you're noticing sooner when the mind wanders so when you first start your mind might wander and it might be you know 30 seconds or so before you realize that you've wandered off but as you get better at noticing the wandering mind you're picking it up you know one or two seconds after it's wandered right. and that's happening quite regularly and it can be this really frustrating process to go through because you're thinking what am I doing this is not working my mind is wandering but that's an often a really nice indication that you're getting better at it so stick with it meditation is not something that will, will happen you know overnight or even after a week or so it is a it is a a, a, li oh, a lifelong practice or something that you, that is needs a degree of commitment um to, for it to actually start to, to show some huge benefits. 
So what about experiences that have pushed you out of your comfort zone? I can only imagine, you know, quitting your job and going on this, you know, seven month uh, travel, you know, spree around the world. It, it, I'm sure that was quite transformational and that really pushed you out of your comfort zone. Um, not everyone has the ability to do that, although I, I would probably disagree with that statement I just made. But, uh, <laughs> um, you know, what other experiences have you had that have kind of pushed you out of your comfort zone? Yeah, it's a great question because that comfort zone pushing us out of that is where all the, the changes can happen. Yeah. Um, doing a doing a course um, pushed me out of my comfort zone. I, you know, I was trained and had worked for many years as a psychologist and then you know, I, I often say to people I didn't decide to be a yoga teacher it kind of chose me mm. there was this beautiful moment where I was sitting with a friend and this um, this random idea popped into my mind like someone had put it there and I just had to, to go with it but trying a, you know, a new course and, and um, it kind of almost experimenting with trying different um, avenues like I went to different meditation classes and um, tried different types of yoga and went to um, different retreats. I went to lots of free stuff as well. It wasn't necessarily stuff that I paid for, but trying these new little kind of things because you just don't know when that which one's going to resonate or which one's going to introduce you to the person that introduces you to you know, the thing that changes you. Um, you know, I always used to go to professional development that was very psychology based, and to to start to do, you know, meditation or um, kirtan, which is you know, beautiful mantras and chanting with music. These sort of you know slightly off center things were definitely out of my comfort zone. They've now become a, just a regular part of life. But trying those different things and just meeting new people was really um, yeah, re again, really powerful and definitely pushed me out of my comfort zone. But the biggest thing, again, it, I, it's not for everyone, I suppose, and I mean, it's very difficult for a lot of people, but the, the single biggest thing that pushed me out of my comfort zone was going to an ashram in Bali uh, to do a really you know, specific type of meditation called bioenergy meditation. That was, to this, to this day, hands down, the most you know, challenging, kind of difficult but profound experience for me is is going to this place and learning this particular type of of meditation. But for those people who can't travel and get you know, understand that that's um I, I take that as a huge privilege and every day I'm grateful for my experiences. But for those people who may not be able to do that is is even those those small day courses or hour classes giving those sorts of things a go because you just never know which one is going to be the one or the, the person that's going to make that change for you. Right. Yeah. One of the things, you know, I have this wish list, this, you know, thing, I, I want to learn German. I want to learn how to play drums, you know, <laughs> this, this list, right? So uh, what I do is each month I do one thing on that list. Now, it doesn't mean I'm a drum you know, I'm a master of the drums or anything, but I might take a lesson <laughs> or, uh, you know, I do something around that. And I actually, did, a few years ago, I was taking guitar lessons and I've played guitar on and off my entire life. So that, that wasn't necessarily stepping out of my comfort zone, but being a student at the place I was taking lessons, each month they would do like free drum lesson Thursday night, free piano Friday, free vocal Saturday. And I took advantage of those because uh, I was already paying for the lessons for guitar and this was just, you know, extras. And you know, I could do it once, but it it just gave me that hour of experience and like, ooh, yeah, that's definitely something I want to pursue or, whoa, no, that's totally not me. <laughs> so I, I, there's a ton of things you can do locally as well uh, like that. And uh, so, yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, so thank you. Um, mm. so, I did the same thing with singing lessons not long oh, ago. I man. <laughs> had always, always wanted, um, I, I, I always knew I could sing to a you know, degree. I was never going to be on you know, on stage singing, but I knew I had, had the ability to sing. Everyone's got the ability to sing, really. 
And this particular day, I just thought, you know what? I just thought it's time to just give this a go. What What is the worst that's going to happen? That's another wonderful mantra. What is the worst thing that could possibly happen? And right. when I finally answered that question, I realized that actually nothing, nothing bad can come out of this. I might feel uncomfortable in the beginning and, you know, I'm, but the woman who is my teacher, she's not going to be you know, recording me and posting me on social media and, you know, deliberately trying to embarrass me in any way. It's just me in a room with someone really just finding my voice. Right. And, you know, figuratively and, and literally helping me find my voice. But that that was a really beautiful experience. It was interesting. Um, just a little quick story. I was in Ireland um, where my I believe my soul res- was completely born in Ireland. Um, Same here, happy. by the way. It's where my honeymoon was. Yes. <laughs> so. <laughs> Just such a beautiful place. My ancestors are from Ireland. I feel like my, I feel that's where my soul is very much connected to. And I, I went there for the first time um, in January, or oh, sorry, late December and January this year. And I was at a beautiful little Irish music festival, and um, I went to this little bar I don't I don't drink myself um but I went to this beautiful bar and there's lots of you know drunk Irish people as is the case (laughs) and these beautiful older men um you know just heard that I was Australian and it's very exciting when an Australian walks in and they were all singing which was a beautiful you know cliche Irish at the time right right and they effectively kind of forced me to to sing some songs and I'd had these singing lessons a little while back and I just thought, you know what, what can I lose? What's, what's the worst that's going to happen? And I just let go and sang and it was beautiful. And they were all, you know, cheering and telling me how lovely my voice was. And I didn't realize that I could, I could do that. So sometimes that, that mind kicks in and says, you can't, but you actually can. And I'm so grateful to those, those, those men for, you know, effectively forcing me to 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 sing because it right. just it was such a beautiful experience. I'm so glad that I just let go and and did it. That's a great. It, it, it helped me to find my voice again, li- literally and figuratively in that time. No, no, I, that's a great story, and I, I can just imagine how happy they were. You know that. <laughs> yeah. You know, because obviously they don't have that shame or fear or whatever, and the fact that you can just come in and own it. You know that that had to make them happy. So you, yeah, you know, we're we're always trying to grow, and you know, we know we haven't fully arrived yet. Um, as you said, we're we're not Buddhist on you know some temple in Tibet. <laughs> um, but uh, what is it that you're currently working on to try to, you know, one, what facet of your life that are you trying to improve right now? Right now, it's the it's same as the, the big thing that's probably been going on for a little while. I'm, I'm working on more of that, that self-love and self-acceptance. I really, again, realized and I could, I could talk to you for literally for days about this concept, but that that self self acceptance is such a huge thing because we seek acceptance externally from so many places and we we think and we do things I, I believe I but I think and do things that is really actually about seeking or finding acceptance from external places okay. and I re- again I realized in that beautiful aha moment. Um, I was actually in Canada recently, and that was where this aha moment uh, occurred. But I was behaving in certain ways or doing certain things that was actually a product of a lack of self-acceptance, um, trying to change certain people or mould certain people to do the things that I I thought I needed from them. And as the more and more that I grow to accept myself for exactly who I am, you know, warts and all, the less I'm actually striving to get that from other people. And consequently, my relationships with just just the diversity of my relationships has changed a lot for the better because I'm not trying to change a a person or um, seek their approval or their acceptance or any of that sort of stuff. Right. And... I've come a long way, but I still feel like there's 
there's that onion is is you know, multi layered and there's still some there's still more self acceptance and self love and at the end of the day I think it's it's my soul that's the big shining light on the inside and I want to really get get into that kind of that pure really super authentic part of me. And it's going to take a lot of time because it's being molded. I think, like you said before, over time, as we grow up and we we go through our adolescence, through our young adulthood, we got all we've got all these different layers that get put on us that we put on ourselves. Right. Society, family, all those people. We've got a lot of layers, and you know, it takes a lot of time to peel those back. Yeah. But definitely, for me, it's self acceptance, and to do that, it's 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 complete introspection. I can't learn to accept myself through other people. It's through self-compassion and through introspection. So getting back in touch with myself and taking those, those moments out to just be with myself. So that, that is completely where I'm at okay. at the moment. Well, thank you for sharing that. I, I, you know, I, there's a couple of things, you know, one, the fact that there's, the onion, right? I mean, I think there's so many people that don't even realize that, that they don't realize that they need to, you know, work on themselves. You know, they're, they're just, uh, for a lack of better terms, a robot or a zombie, and they just go to their work, they get their paycheck, they, you know, they, they just go through life like that. And then there's other people that, oh, wow, yeah, there's this me here. And then, you know, they can start to work on themselves or not, you know, they make a decision, but it, it is truly never ending. Um, I, I do think it's it's so rewarding, though, to go through this path and to share with other people and to talk about other people's journeys and to understand some of the challenges that, that, that they're having. And, uh, you know, that that's a whole intent of this podcast is to kind of help people discover, you know, that they're not alone on, you know, these journeys of self-discovery. And, you know, hopefully, you know, there's a, a tool or two or a method or something that we talk about that can enlighten them to help them further along on their journey. So I appreciate you sharing Definitely. that story. Thank you. And I was talking to some beautiful friends last night about this exact topic and it's it's very tempting sometimes to um, want to go back to kind of, I, I call it, I talk about it as being asleep or being in the dark. Yeah. Like, you know, um, ignorance is bliss, my friend said. And I thought, you know what, that's, that is actually, that's, that's, largely very true yeah. the more I learn about myself or I learn about um, different facets of the society or the foods I'm consuming or the people I'm spending time with all these things and I start to kind of wake up and see things differently it's it's almost like I've had a, an eye transplant and I can just I'm seeing <laughs> things so differently now it's really a brain transplant right or a soul transplant but I'm seeing things so differently I you know I can't walk into supermarkets like I used to because I just see packets whereas before I would just buy the packets and put them into the bin yeah. whereas part of my journey has been understanding the impact of, on the environment and and you know there's when you when you start to kind of wake up or, or realize these things about yourself it, it can be met with with a lot of difficulty and a lot of um there's a very it's very tempting to look at the regrets of oh, I should never have done that, or why did I even start doing that, or what was I doing to myself? And it's very easy for us to fall into the trap of, of almost getting that little invisible beating stick out and beating ourselves down for what we used to do before we were awake. Um, so it's nice to, to remind ourselves with that compassion that we didn't know this stuff before, so Absolutely. You know, we can't beat ourselves up to something that we didn't know. And when we commit to this this journey or this this process it is lifelong but it is very rewarding and it, it can be met sometimes with those little moments of oh, i just don't want to know anymore <laughs> like <laughs> right. enough's enough i'm i don't want to know anymore i've known too much and i'm you know and that's okay it's okay to get to that point and and um i met a beautiful person again in ireland and um who who was a reiki healer actually and he he said to me and when he, he did a session and he said you know, you, you can overdo the awakening. <laughs> you know, there, there's, you can do too much. You can overdo it and it can be overwhelming. So take take the time. It's very tempting to want everything to happen tomorrow. Mm. But it, it is, it's going to unfold at, at, a, in a, at a pace that's going to be suited to where we're at at the moment. And we, we, 
we can take a break sometimes. It doesn't mean that you've stopped working on yourself. It means that you've you know, consciously, deliberately taken some time to just, you know, maybe be blissfully ignorant for a small period of time just to integrate everything yes. that you've learned. Yes. That, that integration process is absolutely vital. We can keep learning and keep discovering that we need to take some time to just integrate this all back into the life that we're living at the moment. Yeah, integration is so vitally important. I, I was just about to say that, and before you mentioned it, I mean, yeah, you, you learn so much, and if you don't integrate it, then you know the, the learning is just going to fall to the side because you don't have the, the time and opportunity to, to make the changes or um, reflections that you need to. So, mm. well, um, just kind of wrapping up here, I, I, I really enjoyed this. Um, so I guess if you were to give us a parting guidance, and I think there's been a few things you've already said <laughs> along our discussion mm -hmm. today, but um, is there any uh, parting wisdom that you would like to offer the audience? I can try. Yeah. I'm not necessarily being referred to as a, a you know, person who's particularly wise, but I can try. Um, I so the couple of things is is that idea of self compassion. I'm a very big, very big advocate of being kind to oneself, um, and that comes from being very unkind to myself in the past. And I've learned just the, the vital importance of being kind along this this journey. Um, patience. Uh, again, that cliche that patience is a virtue. Patience has been uh, a fundamental attitude that I've adopted along just well just life in general but be patient things will unfold uh, a lovely quote that I heard recently that I probably will put somewhere permanently on myself <laughs> in the near future is what you seek is seeking you so we can we can push and fight and strive or we can, you know, lay in bed all day hoping that it just happens, or we can find that beautiful middle ground and, mm. and keep walking along our path and, and trying and having a degree of persistence with things because what what we seek is going is going to unfold. Um, but I suppose the biggest thing that for me, and I, I do have this, this particular thing permanently on me, yeah. is the word, ba the word balance. Um, I've actually got it on my left-hand ring finger, and it's a lovely little reminder every day to keep in balance. We can easily fall off kilter, go you know, too far in whichever direction. But whatever the, whatever you do, and for your listeners who might be you know, starting out on this journey, is you don't have to do what everyone else is doing. You don't have to have, to have a prescribed technique or anything like that. It's you don't have to become you know, go to a 10-day silent retreat or go live out in the bush and not eat for three months. You know, you don't have to go to extremes and you don't have to necessarily do what everyone else is doing, but maintain a, a level of balance. You right. can still live in this this world and do what you're doing with your, you know, self-discovery journey kind of on the side. You can jump straight into it, but maintain a, a degree of balance in what you used to be doing it, I, for me, balance has been a, a beautiful, beautiful word and a lovely reminder when I feel like I'm going too far in one direction. Oh, yeah, that's powerful. Thank you for that. Um, so, you know, how's the best way for us to connect with you um, online, social media, um, anything yeah. like that? Um, well, there's a few different ways, and I'll, I'll be honest, I didn't... Um, I was so excited to to be part of your podcast. Yeah, and, you know, I don't want, I don't, um, I don't necessarily want to advertise myself. It was just okay. a beautiful thing to share with people. Yeah. Um, but if yeah, if people want to connect, I, I mean, I do. I, I, I'm a psychologist, and I'm a yoga teacher, and I'm a mindfulness practitioner. I'm based in Brisbane, Australia, so I, I do, um, you know, face to face consultations with people um, in different places around Brisbane and Australia and do a very much an outreach service. I'm very much into Skype sessions too for people who can't access the, the services physically. But on my, I've got a website, so dharmaandco.com is my website. And I often get asked from people, well, what on earth does dharma mean? 
And um, I suppose very much in line with what you're you're doing here, Tom, is the word Dharma is loosely, it's a Buddhist word, it's loosely translated to, um, you know, the word truth and finding your own unique authenticity and truth. So my mission in life with my business is to empower people to un, unlayer that onion and to find that, that unique truth, their own Dharma. And the co-part is I... I do that by using the, the three modalities of yoga, psychology, and mindfulness. Um, so I've got some blogs on my website. I just finished an eight-week um, series of the John Kabat-Zinn is the, often the, seen as the modern-day kind of mindfulness person, the founder of mindfulness. Um, he, has, he talks about eight mindful attitudes and ways that we can view the world through mindful lenses. So I've spent the eight last eight weeks talking on uh, a live Facebook post about those oh, wow. attitudes and how wow. we can live life through those attitudes. So they're all on my Facebook page, which is, again, Dharma and Co. through Facebook. Um, but I'm always so happy and keen to hear from people who don't necessarily want help but want just want to share, share information. And actually, I've just started, um, hopefully the first issue will come out in in July, but I've just started editing a magazine called Hopiness, which is hope and happiness. Oh, okay. And it's all about bringing good news and happiness to the world rather than um, media and news that talks about the tragedies and difficulties and the, the terror and the, the, the death and all these horrible things that just help to feed the fear that a lot of humans already possess. Um, Hopiness is my way of bringing the the yang into the yin. That's awesome. <laughs> bringing the, the, the bringing the the happiness and those beautiful stories that people have. That and I've been interviewing people, um, you know, over the last couple of weeks, and will continue to do that. And finding out these beautiful acts of kindness and these beautiful stories that people have that would never in a million years make it onto you know the channel whatever sky news or channel nine in Australia right. because they're just not you know, sensational enough to sell, but they're powerful to remind people that there's, yes, there's bad stuff happening in the world, but for all the bad, there's the equal and equal good and that balance that's happening in the world. Right. And and I, I have to believe that there is balance. So my mission through this magazine is to help people realize um, that there is good stuff. And cause I work a lot with children um, kids are just bombarded, I think, with a lot of negativity. And it's very easy in their vulnerable mind to develop, you know, a really significant psychological issue with anxiety. And I want kids to be able to read this magazine and hopefully realise that there is there is good stuff, there are good people, and there's random acts of kindness happening. So if any of your listeners have any stories that they would you know, love to share, please uh, you know, send me an email. My email is you know, Dharma and Co at gmail.com and I'd love to feature anyone in, in the magazine in the coming months. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. I might email you. Uh, my wife and I got married. We have a scavenger hunt and uh, we didn't participate. This was for our guest to have something to do. And one of the things they had to do, or one of the scavenger hunt ideas was they had to do a random act of kindness. And uh, oh. During the scavenger hunt, each little thing they did, they had to take a picture or a video and send it to us. So at the end of the scavenger hunt, which is only like an hour, we probably had 300 pictures from people. Um, so it was all of our wedding yeah. guests out in the town uh, of about 20,000 people doing all these fun, crazy adventures. <laughs> so, but it was oh, uh, it wow. was pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, I've got a lovely rush of um, warmth when you were telling that story. That's so beautiful. I may, with your permission, I may, I may borrow that idea. If that's absolutely, okay, that yeah. Is just brilliant. I love that. Yeah, Thank I'll, you. I can email you uh, the uh, the specifics. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely. So. Um, oh please! Thank you. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciated, uh, you know, your vulnerability and you sharing your story with us. It was, uh, this, this was, I really enjoyed your, this, this time with you today. So thank you very much. I did too, Tom. Thank you so much. And I just absolutely love what you're doing. I think it's such a beautiful thing, such a powerful thing for anyone listening to hear these stories that you're bringing to them. So thank you so much. I really, really, really am grateful and appreciative of your time.
I really enjoyed interviewing Davina today. It was a really awesome chat. And, you know, she she talked about a lot of different things about the transformation of, you know, working uh, basically a nine to five for someone else and always living for someone else's values and their task. And she thought that's where uh, happiness came from. And, you know, her transformation to understanding happiness came from within. So it was pretty awesome, you know, and, you know, the three key things I took away from this were, you know, she, she talked about two quotes. One was just let go. Um, I think that's really important. And then the second one was, you know, there is no right or wrong. Essentially, you're, you're here to tell your own story and to do what you feel is authentic to yourself. I, I found both of those were really good things. And then, you know, one of the questions that she asked was, you know, what's the worst thing that can happen? And uh, really examine that. And of course, really having balance in your life and, you know, making sure that you understand that happiness comes from within and don't try to seek validation from others or material possessions. You know, all that happiness can come from within. So I thought those were great insights that she offered us today and that we can definitely look at and brace and make a part of our lives. Thanks for listening to the UpRev Ninja podcast with your host, Tom Hudson. Navigate to our website at uprev.ninja today, where you will find additional resources to help you discover the best version of you. While you're there, join our newsletter and join the discussion on your favorite social media platforms. We've got some awesome guests lined up to share with us how they are becoming the best versions of themselves. Again, thank you for listening. Now it's time to go out and uprev your life.